What a broad range of culture that you've been exposed to. That's that's pretty fucking cool. Yeah, Nigeria is a strange spot because I've never I've never been, but when you look at the numbers of successful immigrants like businessmen and people that have come over from nigeria and how industrious they are and then you look at how many successful nigerian scammers there are like, <laughs> it's a wise very clever place you got the email from the prince too huh i didn't get it well i'm oh, sure okay. i have but um <laughs> The one I was thinking about was Jamie was telling me a story yesterday about a guy who, what did he sell? Uh, he sold a non-existent bank? Uh, airport. Airport. To, to a airport. bank. Yeah. To a bank. To a, that's right. He sold a non-existent airport to a bank. There's been several stories mm -hmm. over the last mm -hmm. couple of weeks about Nigerian scammers making big scores. Yeah. The Hello there. This is Eugene from Kenya. So um, we've seen Joe Rogan addressing something to do with Nigerians and, um, you know, we have been hearing the notorious stories about scammings which are happening in Nigeria and this is not a new thing about that but um, there's some important aspects that I believe that we need to talk and I know Nigeria is one of the most populated countries in Africa and which forms as per the last census that was 213 million people in Nigeria as for the last census which was done. So this poses a lot of things and you try to understand that um, in a place where there are a lot of people, a lot of things tend to happen. You know, a lot of people, a lot of talent, in a place where there's a lot of people, one thing which are prone to happen is that there are a lot of talents, there are a lot of problems, there are a lot of solutions again. So um, it's a both win and lose. And uh, just like any other society, we have different people. And the more the population, the more these people we have. And I understand we have some issues with economic situation in Africa generally. So in a place where it is populated like Nigeria, people have to find ways of you know making money. And this leads to things like scamming. Uh, precaution, I'm not saying that all Nigerians indulge in this but most of cases have been traced in nigeria which have some repercussions and have some things that we need to say as africans or as an african person there's one that i think closed down a brazilian bank that they, <laughs> they took so much of their money that the bank had to shut the bank had to shut down what is it about nigeria <laughs> why are they so good at that uh, a lot of, a lot of smart and enterprising people and i think if that's channeled in the right way then that's a, a very good thing but well, i think some people obviously there's the resources are very limited so they're they're deciding to just go dark and f scam people but <laughs> as a person who hasn't been a victim of this yeah. it's quite amusing yeah i mean if you see if you see some of the stuff that that can get pulled off it's uh it, it's quite impressive you Pull know that story it, it is it is very much like man it's actually 330 equivalent to american dollars 330 million wow. <laughs> Jeez, it happened nice. in the 90s though i guess the story is just now going around for okay. whatever reason oh. but it happened in the 90s which is what this says a con man once sold an airport that didn't exist for 330 million now to stop and think about that 330 million in the 90s is probably like 600 million today or something sure. fucking bananas yeah. that's hilarious yeah, there's some there's some crazy stuff that Nigerian fraudster and con artist Emmanuel. How do you spell? His, how do you pronounce his last name? N W U D E. Mude, maybe Mude. N say it again. Mude, I guess something like that. What are you you starting with a M? How do you saying it? Uh, Mude with an N. But are yeah, you Emmanuel? But how are you doing it? It's it's an N, but it's it, the pronunciation's a, a little bit different. Say it again. Mude. Mu it sounds to it, me like you're saying Mude. No, it's a, it's an N. Go ahead uh, again. I'm gonna close we, my eyes. Weir Weirdly enough, that guy's name is two letters off my actual first name. Really? Yeah. My Why don't you tell my first what your name, real first name is Nzube. Whoa. Which is spelled N Z U B E. So, so that's actually two letters different. So you just said Zubi would be a little bit more. Yeah, Zubi is just Zubi's easier. just easier. It's yeah. cool. It's a cool name too. No one no one has that. Yeah. Thank you. I've never heard of Zubi before. <laughs> So he pulled off the third largest con in history by selling a non-existent airport to a Brazilian bank for 242 oh, yeah, Brazilian million bank. U.S. Brazilian dollars. Bank. Before Nigerian internet scams became synonymous with your original early 2000s email account, Mude, did I do it? Yeah, close All enough. Right, thank you. Successfully convinced an unassuming bank manager by the name of Nelson Sakaguchi that he was selling a yet-to-be-built airport for a price of $330 million as the former director of the Union Bank of Nigeria himself, Mude, 
was privy to confidential information that was crucial to him pulling off his long con. Oh, so he knew shit about banking. Mm, mm. Using the information, he imper- then impersonated the governor of Central Bank of Nigeria at the time. Paul. Okay, here's another one. Paul Oguma? Oguma. Oguma? Oguma. So you wouldn't go Wooma. It's Oguma. 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 Yeah. And connected with Saku Gucci. We need Steve Aoki to come back and help us with the Japanese name to inform him of a mouthwatering deal. Nigeria's plan to build a brand new airport in uh, another one, Abuja. Abuja, yeah. Okay, that's the capital. To juice it up a bit for poor Sakaguchi, Mude promised the head of the Brazilian of the Brazilian bank a commission fee to the tune of ten million U.S. dollars if the deal was approved. To get it over the line, Sakaguchi paid one hundred ninety-one million in cash. In cash. As you do, and the remainder in the form of outstanding interest awaited patiently for the construction of said airport. Wow. Wow. That's the kind of thing you can only pull off once, huh? Yeah. yeah. If you can get that guy again, you're, you're a wizard. <laughs> I just saw a guy that got scammed, and there was a documentary about it. It was, it was a television show, rather. It was really sad because he was a dude who was an older gentleman, looked like he was in his 60s, and he was convinced that there was this woman – who is, uh, you know, his his love, and she lived in Europe, and he traveled there, and he was sending her money and the whole deal, and he traveled there twice mm. to meet her, and both times she couldn't see him, both times. Oh wow! But he still believed, and his daughter was like, I, I don't know what the fuck to do. This guy really believes, and you could see he had this lost look in his eye, mm. like he really believed that there was a woman over there that was corresponding with him back and forth, and he was sending her money, he, like sent her a lot of money. Like, yeah. I think it was more than $100,000, if I remember correctly. And he really believed that she was going to be there for him. And then when he went over there, something came up and she, yeah. she couldn't meet him. And Yeah, it's, it's weird. With, with, with stuff like this, I always feel like in, in some way you kind of feel sad for the person. But in another, you're kind of like, what what were you thinking? Like, how do you bounce do back you... from that? Like people hit some lows. Yeah, People hit some lows in life. How do you bounce back from thinking that there's a girl in Europe that's going to be your love and sending her a hundred thousand dollars and traveling over there twice mm. and getting duped both times. And then how do you bounce back from that? I think the first thing you should do is not tell anybody His like daughter. T- take, take the L without just quietly, <laughs> take <the> just, <laughs> just take it, take it quietly and, and privately and don't, uh, don't tell people. His daughter knew about it. Okay. So it was like, and then the, the camera crew. I mean, this motherfucker brought a camera oh, crew. I don't know why. I, I think the show, I, this is, I very, vaguely remember this, and I think it was about 10 years ago. I think the show was all about people that were getting scammed. Okay. And it was about why people get scammed mm. and what, you know, what is it that makes people believe ridiculous things. Yeah. But when, when it comes to romance and money, those are the two where people get greedy. Yeah, I was, I was literally going to say it's greed. <laughs> It's greed because only greedy people can fall for some of those things. I mean, you see some of those scams and it'll come through saying, okay, yeah. I've just inherited $30 million and uh, I need somebody in the U.S. with a U.S. bank account to yeah. help me out with this and I'll give you a 10% cut. And, you know, that should raise a lot of red flags for anybody <laughs> who's kind of thinking with their, with their head on straight. So as I said earlier, why there is a large population and, you know, Africa is still having issues with employment, including my country, Kenya, where I am right now. So that implies that people will have to find solutions. People will have to look at different uh, spots, different spaces. And Nigeria is quite um, known to be in an online space so much because they speak English as, as, as their first language, generally like just Yoruba. And even you could, you could hear some your English in their Yoruba language, you could also hear some Yoruba accent in their English. So this makes them so viable for online jobs. And while they're so exposed to the internet, it's easier for them to uh, get uh, so close to people from different countries. And with this, uh, they can find loopholes, they can find spaces, they can find ways of smartly getting money out of people. Now, from personal experience, I've ever been scammed by a Nigerian. Well, um, it came, I, I, I never saw it coming, but I, I learned a lot of things out of the experience and it made me become so vigilant. And one thing, one positive thing that I would like to talk about is um, these people are really smart 
and they really know what they are doing so this smartness keeps them ahead of the game and as i've said earlier while we have a number of people there are so many ways to unlock opportunities you know um the only problem with nigeria is one we have a lot of talented people that african minds need to hear and also some people have said that nigeria is the giant of africa supposedly it might be true nigeria might be the giant of africa because it produces a number of people who are so talented uh beat music sports you know um military field of medicine we have seen a lot of nigerian americans who have surfaced this position so well and they trace their origin back in nigeria so nigeria is a country it's blessed nigeria is a country also it's blessed and yes it's also has its problems you know and they say that a place with blessing comes with the inherent curse you know so with this people who are talented some of them explore this talent in different fields which leaves some people to you know to to suffer or to cry now one of the uh, most of the underlying factors that necessitates this is um you know when you're in a different country and a person's a different country there is no legal laws which can be taken and because these people they they they, they swindle these properties away from you even without you knowing the the moment you realize you've already you've, you've already pressed send and you know it's 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 just a little bit too late to uh, to, to to transfer to to reverse things or to reverse the money you try do your follow up you ain't find something so as i was saying a place or a person who has blessing they also have the inherent cast that comes with the blessing there is a problem that um in as much as they are talented people and i respect nigerians they are my brothers i'm from kenya we are all black people but i feel like um in as much as we are celebrating uh we are celebrating these uh talents we are celebrating these skills we are celebrating this wisdom that god gave on to the nigerians we also need to call them out for some things that they are doing and i think who is a good person or who is a good friend a good friend is a person who will tell you why there's a mistake a good friend is a person who will also tell you why something is wrong and i'm taking this time uh in as much as i'm trying to put nigeria in the spotlight because they normally raised they normally raise the african flag in different sectors and they're well recognized so well in you know different things that they do um they try to do things in the extreme end you know when people are doing 40 percent, they do 80 percent, and that's the power of nigeria that's where the strength is because their community uh goes with darwinian uh evolution you know you know darwinian theory you snooze you lose you become weak you die you become someone's prey and with that you see such kinds of society can bring out dangerous people when you're living in darwinian society when you're living in, with darwinian theory and that's what's happening in nigeria you gotta go out or go home that's how they say so if you sleep you know they make money so uh, you, you, you're just gonna get misplaced they say everyone works so hard everyone even a child is born knowing that you need to go and get money that happens in nigeria and so i understand that these might push people to do some things which are bad you know um a number of countries have also been complaining about nigeria you know so this is a phenomena which uh, happens and <clears throat> the the question that i think we should ask ourselves as people is um how are we going to uh put this as african nation how are we going to help nigeria as one africa as one people because this is a sport this is a place in africa where people have talents this is a place in africa where if we tap into it so well it can uh, raise the african flag so further so the question that i'm posing back to you, you as my viewer i mean what can we do as africans to at least support our brothers and sisters in nigeria i'm not saying our brothers and sisters in nigeria are weak or i'm not saying that we should help them financially because I, I'm, I'm we're feeling that uh, there are no jobs there are no every part of africa is struggling but we collectively as africans how can we make nigeria a better place for uh nigerians if they want to thrive economically uh, i know there is a stiff competition there that's why some people 
migrate, we have a number of uh, Nigerian Americans who are immigrants in the United States, a number of them, Germany, Canada, name them, and also other parts of African countries. I'm also saying because we also have some Kenyans who also go to the United States, go to Canada, go to the United Kingdom to look for jobs, you know, but the highest number that has been recorded is from the Nigerians. So with that being said, we know they have raised our African name so far. They have helped us raise, they, they have set bars for Africa, includes music, you know, the Afrobeats, you know. We have Nigerian rappers, we have people in sports, we have people in medicine, we have people in technology, talking about the nuclear weapon. If you want today, Nigerians can make that possible because they can do literally anything. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, I believe that if we can come together as an African Union or as a nation, as Africans, we can find a way to cap this problem because this problem keeps on backfiring and they come to us. They're not only scamming people in the United States, they're also scamming fellow Africans. Me personally talking, of, I was ever scammed, but I didn't take it personal. Now I'm coming back to the community and asking you, how can we do, what can we do for our brothers and sisters in Nigeria? This might look something which is good, but on doing what is right, ethicals, you know, scamming is not ethical. That's why it's an issue. Today it's me, tomorrow it's you. You might be scammed. We're not going to blame all Nigerians. We have good people in Nigeria. We have so hard working people in Nigeria. Yes, but we have to recognize also the problems that uh, they pose for other Africans. We have Nigerians in Kenya who are doing very well, who are doing businesses. We also have Nigerians in Kenya who are doing some bad things. It's just like any other society. We have people who do these things. So tell me what you think in the comment section about this topic. Remember the question that I asked you. This is Eugene from Kenya. Peace, love and harmony. Salute.